Okay, um, this episode was requested by Nisi Ding Ding Johnson. Excuse me while I turn my scanner off. I'll start it off with this. The majority of freight cars are not owned by railroads. Only a few railroads own freight cars. This is due to the formation of freight car leasing companies like General American Marks Company, GE Rail Services, CIT Group, All Capital Rail Management Incorporated, Anderson's, Union Tank Car Company, and TTX Company. Especially TTX, which is a company that owns not only the majority of intermodal equipment, but also the auto racks and railbox boxcars and railgun gondolas. TTX was formed in 1955 as Trailer Train and today owns over 165,000 cars in intermodal wells. This company is owned by BNSF, Canadian National, Canadian Pacific, CSX, Faramex, KCS, Norfolk Southern, Pan Am, and Union Pacific. Each also have their own fleets of freight cars as well, but the majority of intermodal cars you will see are owned by TTX. Half their fleet is intermodal equipment, while a quarter is auto racks, and the other quarter is railbox and railgun. Other immortal equipment is owned by BNSF Railway Authorities, Coast, and Arkansas, Oklahoma Railroad, and possibly other companies. I've seen two or three more go through on uh, 22K yesterday. Uh, freight cars are not just owned by railroads and leasing companies, however. Many companies that ship by rail also own freight car fleets. American Steel Foundries, BP, Amoco Chemical Company, Aluminum Company of America, AK Steel, American Steel Processing Company, etc., and also freight car manufacturers like Trinity Rail and Greenbrier. But all freight cars owned by railroads or leasing companies are leased to customers, and most are not owned by any railroad. Even unit trains of coal or grain, are which are all one railroad's cars, the cars are all leased to the customer, either the shipper or the receiver. I'm not going to list all the companies, as that would take a long time and be very boring. Freight cars come in many shapes and sizes. There are countless sizes of tank cars, many sizes of covered hoppers, for different commodities, various box cars, flat cars, gondolas, cars capable of carrying virtually anything you can think of. Tank cars haul liquid, liquid chemicals, corn syrup, flammable liquids, acids, nitrogen, and more. Covered hoppers haul grain, feed, salt, dry chemicals, plastic pellets, cement, flour, and more. Box cars haul a multitude of commodities, cement, food, salt, paper, drywall, Lumber and more. Flat cars carry a variety of commodities in various types. Lumber on center beam he flats, heavy utility poles and bulkhead flats, intermodal and more on flat cars and special press center and heavy duty flat cars for high and heavy loads. Gondolas of low, mid, and high sides for con contaminated dirt, steel, garbage, anything needs to containing but can't go into a box car. Tank car or covered hopper. Auto racks are for carrying vehicles, single level, bi level, and tri level for large vehicles, mid sized vehicles, and small vehicles. In intermodal equipment, which is long flat cars, multi-unit spine cars, and single or multi-unit well cars for transporting trailers and containers. All to keep the world running by delivering raw materials, products, and waste to their destination. Uh, now at this point, I am going to try and pause the video and... Uh, we'll take some look, look at some freight cars. that. Behind me is my other computer that the photos were supposed to be on a flash drive, and somehow they are not on the flash drive. Even they were there where they were the first time I tried to record this, I put the flash drive in today, and it's not there. So I don't know what's going on with that, but we'll try this this way. Okay, that's not going to work because if I put the picture up on this com on the computer that this that the phone is against, that's the computer that the script is on. So therefore. I can't read the script with a photo over it, and I can't put up the photo and take it down to read the script because then the photo wouldn't be on the screen. So what we'll go over with this. Um, the first car I have in, I had in the photos was STSX4096. Uh, the car is not owned by Cytrex Sunday. STSX is a reporting mark used by Tate & Lyle Ingredients America is Incorporated. Uh, it's used to haul corn syrup and is one of the cars that goes through here quite frequently. In fact, the photo was taken here. Um, it would most likely have been going to uh, Sweeteners Plus, which uh, makes, which deals in uh, sweeteners for foods. Corn syrup, uh, artificial sweeteners, that sort of thing. Uh, the next tank car was uh, PROX 44579, which was 32,000, 30,200 uh, gallon tank car for hauling flammable liquids. Uh, in, that case, in this case, it was a photo of one taken outside a frontier yard that 
uh, was hauling isopropanol or isopropyl alcohol. Uh, 3,200 gallons of isopropyl alcohol will do a lot of ballast. I might just need that <laughs> amount. Um, then we had uh, OFOX uh, 258021, which is a form. It was a former CSX car. It was patched uh, into OFOX and is owned by Residco. Resid it was a 5250 cubic foot covered hopper, which would normally haul light density agricultural products, but it was at the time of it. At, it was at the end of its life cycle and was hauling salt in American rock salt. Then I had a D, DME 51280. It was a typical 5161 cubic foot covered hopper used in grain service. Uh, it, its reporting mark is for the Dakota, Minnesota, and Eastern, but that is now owned by Canadian Pacific, so the railroad car is owned by Canadian Pacific. Next it was TTGX 982135, which was a auto rack, a TTX company auto rack with a Conrail shell. When Conrail existed as Class 1, they owned part of TTX, but that ownership was split up between NS and CSX. And the terminal railroad part that's owned by NS and CSX still doesn't own any equipment of itself. Then was NS uh, 16906, which was a uh, coil steel coil car owned by Norfolk Southern. Uh, it, that particular one had two shields over it, which are the covers that go on top of the car. Unfortunately, I can't show you the picture. If you don't know what a steel coil car is, uh, you'll have to look it up because I unfortunately, something messed up and I'm not going to wait another week. Um... That would take steel from a steel mill to a rolls of steel from a steel mill to some industry that deal that handles rolled steel. And there was in the photo was a car next to it that was a rotor jump gondola that was used for scrap. So you have a car with for scrap and a car for finished steel right next to each other in the same train. Then it was a five unit forty foot well car on the BNSF railway, which is used to carry twenty and forty foot. Uh, international containers. They are not common on this line because usually most of the intermodal that goes through here is uh, 53 foot domestic containers. It used to be uh, 48 foot and then they went out, they then slowly 53 foot started showing up and they'd be 48 foot and then they had the 53 foot on top of it. And now it's mainly 53 foot single or double stack. Occasionally you'll see a 40 foot. I don't think I've seen a 48 foot in a long time. Probably 10 years or at least. Uh, then was another steel coil car. Um, the Norfolk, it was NW16971. Went off camera for a while. I had the shift position. Crouched on the floor. Uh, now this had two shields also, but they didn't match. They were both Norfolk Southern, but they looked different. That's a common thing, and it and it isn't at a steel mill or, or an industry that takes steel. They just take the lids off, they set them aside, and... They, whenever they load the car or unload the car or whatever and the car is ready to go, they put the shields back on it and they just send it out. They don't care what shields they are. So often you will get an, a Norfolk Southern uh, car with a CS with two CSX shields on it or some other shield. Uh, something that should be uh, modeled. That's something that really should be modeled because that's what happens. I mean, this was a Norf Norfolk and Western car with two different Norfolk Southern shields on it, which Norfolk and Western is Norfolk Southern now, so... But there's still two different shields. They didn't look the same, and they didn't match with the car. In this case, they were two orange... Wait a yeah, okay, there's that. Next one was another Norfolk and Western car, which was 169893, a steel coil car, and this one had orange shields on it instead of Norfolk and Western or Norfolk Southern. They didn't have any markings on them. They looked like they were probably X Elgin Juliet and Eastern or Elgin Juliet and Eastern, whatever. And then was NLKL seven three two zero nine four. It was a center beam flat owned by Northwestern Oklahoma. Which they these cars you see them a lot. They'll have uh, wraps on them with wrap lumber, or they'll be empty. In this one it was loaded. It was loaded with. Uh, 
wrap, the wrap lumber that looked to be going, that was marked for Riverside Forest Products, which is a specialty lumber company based out of Georgia. It looked like it was carrying 2 by 4s A lot of Rick. Next was FBOX 506003, which is a uh, real box, a TTX company. Uh, it was a 7550 cubic foot high cube double door box car. It was AR, AAR class, Association of American Railroads class XP. But TTX has their own designations, which with this one was an XJH61. The J designates that it was built by Freight Car America, uh, formerly Johnstown America, which is where the J comes from in Freight Car America. Wait a minute. I got that, got two cars confused. That one was an XNH 52 built by National Steel Car. It was a 60 to 76 cubic foot box car. I have two TTX cars on the script at the same time. And it doesn't help not having the photos. The next one, the Johnson American one, the XJH61 was T, -T Box 675450. I'm going to leave that mistake in there. I don't care. I corrected it. Then we had NS165060, uh, which was a uh, Colt Norfolk Southern Coil car with a single shield. These are newer cars. It was practically brand new, if not brand new. I didn't look at the build date. I believe it was almost brand new. Then there was uh, TTAX553843, which is a three or five unit spine car owned by the TTX company. They, it was a 53 foot uh, unit. Um, it says here it was typical handling containers or trailers, but I don't think these were. I think I accident, I think I got that confused with some other picture, because usually the multi-unit ones can't don't have the fifth wheel. Then I had another center ring flat, which appeared to be owned by Union, be owned by Union Pacific. Uh, it was at too great of an angle to see the reporting mark, but again, it carries lumber. Um, then I have uh, had uh, DTTX 727390, which is a TTX company three-unit 53-foot well car, is carried um, carries normally 53-foot containers, but they can carry smaller ones. Some of them they don't. Some of them they, if they have the markings, they can. But I don't think the ones that don't have the markings, because you'll see on the side. They'll have 20 foot to here, 40 foot here, and 48 foot here, and I believe this car did have those markings on it. Um, I really wish I could show you the photos, but I'm not, again, I'm not going to mess with it. It's pouring rain, it's thundering, I want to get this done, Sparky's live, yeah. Then was uh, GNWR 5355, uh, it's a 33... 61 cubic foot two bay carpet hopper built by Trinity Rail and owned by Janice Hamming Railroad. Uh, Janice Hamming Railroad does not exist anymore. It was merged in the Rochester and Southern, but they still use the reporting mark. In fact, Janice Hamming just got brand new uh, covered hoppers. I just saw them just the other day sitting out, sitting down at the interchange and the clean, either on the, either on the siding or the clean out, brand new. New gray paint. Uh, different numbers, which is good because the ones built in 2000 and 2001 are really showing their age. Go over Northeast Rail Photography and you'll see those cars are rust buckets. Some of them, the pieces have been, they've replaced pieces and such. Um, now at this point, I have a bunch more cars, but the video is getting to be four, is over 14 minutes and I had this cut out at 18 the last time and really pissed me, yeah, really made me mad. So, uh, I'm going to cut this out, record the next video, and later.